like to call to order the Hatfield Township Board of Commissioners workshop meeting for May 8, 2019. Roll call. President Zipfo. Here. Vice President Hughes. Here. Commissioner Andrus. Here. Commissioner Rogers. Here. Commissioner Thomas. Here. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, Vice President Hughes if you would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance tonight. All right, is there a motion for approval of tonight's agenda? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Thomas, second by Commissioner Andrus. All in favor of approving tonight's agenda say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Hearing none, we can move forward with the agenda before you. Citizens comments, do we have any citizens comments? A little bit of a lighter agenda tonight, so we weren't expecting meant much, but uh, we'll jump right into the consent items, uh, the housekeeping. Is there a motion to enter into the record the consent items listed in your agenda? Second. Motion by Commissioner Andrews. Second by Commissioner Rogers. Those items include uh, the police report for the month of April, the HTMA meeting minutes for March 12, the North Penn Water Authority minutes of March 26, and the Parks and Rec Board meeting minutes of March 4. Uh, with that, I'll call the question. All in favor of moving those into the record say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, that is approved. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Committee reports. First is Planning and Zoning Committee. Commissioner Rogers. Thank you. Uh, the first item is Aspen Mills <coughs> Land Development, the sewer module discussion. Yes, thank you, Commissioner Rogers. Uh, Aspen Mill Land Development, it, this is a nine watt subdivision. I think the board is, is familiar with this. Uh, it's on Walnut Street and involves the extension of Fortuna Drive. Uh, there is an existing um, home that was built on Walnut Street and there'll be eight more homes built off of the extension of Fortuna Drive. Uh, what we're considering <coughs> this evening, or is on, on the agenda for discussion this evening, is a resolution to approve the land development, or I'm sorry, the uh, planning module application. The land development has been approved by the board, and once the planning module is approved by DEP, then they will be able to record their land development. Um, just so, so you know, and I know one of the residents who lives adjacent to the project is here as well, um, the, all of the conditions of the board's approval resolution have not yet been met. So, uh, so those all have to be done in addition to getting the planning module approved. So they still have to, if you remember, there was a requirement that an, a homeowners association be formed. There were agreements regarding, uh, regarding trees and regarding those specialized uh, rain gardens that were being con <coughs> constructed. So all of that still has to be done. And, and will be done before the plan's recorded. But in the meantime, all of the appropriate <coughs> reviewing agencies have signed off on the, on the planning module and the, uh, the main line that runs down toward Lenhart Road, which was the holdup, has been constructed and accepted by the authority at this point. So this will just be on your agenda in two weeks for approval of the resolution. And at that point, the entire packet gets sent over to DEP, and DEP will review the packet and, uh, and send it back for more information or approve it. And that will all be done before the plans are recorded. Any questions, comments? Yeah. Rep so they haven't complied with all the requirements that we voted on a few months ago? Several months ago, yes. And so why would I vote on this if they haven't satisfied the original? This is. This is not dependent upon the other conditions. The, con the other conditions are conditions required before the plan can be recorded. DEP planning module is a separate process. So it, it often runs, in fact, more often than not, it runs concurrently. And you'll see on the next one, when we talk about the next one, the planning module is actually being approved before the land development is even done. So um, there's, there's usually some lag time for DEP to review the planning module. And uh, it's not unusual at all. In fact, it's more, it's more usual than not to have the planning module approved before everything's ready for the plan to be recorded. And anything else on that? Nothing else under Aspen Mill. The, the next item on the committee report is the Clemens Food Group. This is uh, a new building. The land development application is currently under review. It was presented to the Planning Commission last month, 
and we'll be back in for further discussion um, either either in May or June. Uh, the, the unusual thing about this particular project is that the flow from this building will go into the Upper Gwinnett Telemensen, um, actually it's the Telemensen Authority now, will go to the Telemensen Authority. There's been an agreement with Telemensen. It's all been approved and um, recommended by the Hatfield Municipal Authority. So what this resolution will do is, will be to allow um, Clemens to go to Elementson Authority and have, have DEP approve that change in our 537 plan, which is our sewage facilities plan, to allow that flow to leave the township. They looked at other possibilities to keep it in the township and there just wasn't any way. Right, the last item is um, 1608 to 1610, North Line Street subdivision discussion. Yes, this is, this is the Klaumenser subdivision. Uh, Mr. Klaumenser is here tonight along with his engineer, <laughs> Jeff Wirt. And this is a, um, it's a, it's an assemblage of several lots and assemblage and redevelopment. Uh, at the end of the day, several lots have been combined and reconfigured and the net result will be the creation of one new building lot and the reconfiguration re, uh, of two other lots. Um, Mr. Klaumens are needed to go to the zoning hearing board. He got relief that was necessary from the zoning hearing board and has been working with the planning commission and with, um, with Mr. McAdam to resolve all of the, uh, the technical issues, the planning issues and the stormwater management issues. So this, this project uh, will be ready for the board to, um, to act on in two weeks. Uh, solicitor will prepare a resolution for approval. And I believe we might have a plan that will show the location, just in case anybody's not familiar. This is very near the <laughs> entrance off of Line Street at, uh, at Brookside Manor Apartments. Fashion route, Ken, as I... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Pay paper. paper. What? <coughs> oh, you you did bring paper. Here, I I told you you wouldn't need it. I think if anybody has any any doubt as to where this where this property is located, I think Jeff could Jeff could show you on the plan where it is. Just right up, right next to Jeff's left hand is the uh, is the Brookside Manor apartment property, and this is the first property adjacent Brookside Manor along Line Street. This, So are there homes currently in the fr uh, front two lots that are described there? Yes. Or this, this home exists. And this Where's the access to that lot? Yeah, that's <coughs> that my lot's, question. It's access through an easement, which how the current access works is, is an easement alongside the Brookside Manor Apartments property. Okay. The consolidation of how many different <coughs> parcels? Eight. 
uh, yeah, the movie lots. The, the net result of this is to clean up a lot of odds and ends of lots out there, movie lots, paper streets, and this, this cleans up a lot of them and leaves us with three fairly regular lots. That, that lot in the rear would be developed for one lot or? One. That's what, a little over an acre or? Oh, half acre, okay. That's, a con it, that's in a, a 20,000 square foot district, so it, it's a conforming lot as far as lot area. They needed some relief on yard requirements, but that was granted by the Zoning Hearing Board. <laughs> so if there aren't any questions, I, we'll, we'll just figure this will come up for a, a vote in two weeks. All right, thank you. Jeff is never going to show, he's always going to show up with paper. He's never not going to bring paper from now on. <laughs> Just moved on. We would have moved on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take care of it in two weeks. <laughs> All right, thanks, folks. You're welcome to stay, by the way. You don't have to. Um, <laughs> all right, Commissioner Rogers, anything else? Oh, well, that's it for tonight. All right, Thank Public you, Works Stanley. Committee, Vice President Hughes. The only thing I have is to mention that uh, Public Works is out preparing uh, inlets and stuff for the paving project coming up, and the Public Works will be open May 18th for the branch drop-off. That's all I have. All right, Park and Recreation Committee, Commissioner Thomas. Unfortunately, do not have a short report tonight. Oh, that's fun. So we had our uh, five and dime race. We had approximately <laughs> 200 registered runners and approximately 150 ran. Um, we also had our Earth Day um, cleanup. We had 35 volunteers for that and members of the Park Board and Shade Tree Commission. Um, some of the areas that were cleaned were the dog park, the aquatic center, the nature center, and the Chestnut Street Trail. Um, so I wanted to say thank you to Stericycle, Franconia Auto Repair, and the Hatfield Township Public Works, um, and also all our volunteers that came out and helped. Um, so uh, Stericycle, Franconia Auto Repair, and uh, Public Works served as drop-off locations. So. And then some of the things we have coming up, Spring Fling Plant Exchange will be Saturday, May 18th. It's 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., and it'll be outside the administration building here. Shade Tree Commission will be out to offer advice, tips, and information as you start your gardening and select your plants. Uh, bring any potted seedlings or other plants you would like to swap or share. Or do you uh, want, is that the right time to do the resolution that's on the agenda? That might be a very good time. I was going to. You're giving, the th you're giving me the thumbs up? All right, so on the agenda is a resolution 19-06. With his, which is a motion for approval of the Shade, shade Tree Plant Exchange for May 18th at 9 a.m., 9 to 12, is that what you said? 9 to 12. So uh, that's a resolution, so we need to approve it publicly, and I will uh, entertain a motion. Uh, Commissioner Thomas. I will move to. Your motion, and second, second by uh, Commissioner Andrus. Any questions or comments? Other than we are thrilled to support that. Uh, without a call to question, all in favor of resolution 19-06 say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, that is approved. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Commissioner, just the item number two before Commissioner Thomas finishes her parks report. Uh, <coughs> call and the public is aware that the township uh, was successful in a grant application a few months ago to help perform a walkability study throughout the township, which we're going through. One of the requirements for the grant was to, uh, for the board to consider a, a resolution that essentially, and it's in the packet if, if, if um, the, you know, the, the residents would like to review, but essentially says that the, the commissioners are committed to creating a healthy community. It's pretty g somewhat uh, generic language for all the communities that receive the grant. And uh, you know, clearly with the history of Hatfield and all of the initiatives that we have undertaken, we, we have clearly shown that there is a commitment and the uh, resolution will just be discussed again in two weeks and considered and then would be then sent to actually the University of Pittsburgh where the funds came for from for the grant. So I, I've heard it's nice in that part of the uh, Commonwealth, but <laughs> that's all for number two. <laughs> all right, so moving on, we have um, lots of get fit uh, things. We've got International Day of Yoga, that's Friday, June 21st from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. And that will be at the School Road Park Amphitheater. 
You must register, and spaces are limited, so go to HatfieldRec.com to uh, register for that. We also have deep water aerobics on Saturdays. Um, that will be at 9.30 a.m. starting June 15th and running through uh, August 31st. That's $55 per resident and $60 for non-resident. Again, you can register at HatfieldRec.com for that. Couch to 5K and beyond. Are you interested in participating in one of all, one or all of our races but aren't sure how to get started? So this program is designed as a nine-week training class that includes race registration. And you can gear up for our next race, which is the Dash and Splash 5K. Uh, the Couch to 5K Beyond is on Tuesdays <coughs> from 7.15 p.m. to 8 p.m. It starts June 18th and runs through August 14th. It'll be here in the administration building. It's $90 for resident and $100 for non-resident. And again, registrations at HatfieldRec.com. Teddy Bear Picnic is coming up as well. It's Wednesday, May 29th. This is where preschoolers and their guardians can enjoy time in the heated fun pool. There are snacks, crafts, and more at the Aquatic Center. Remember to bring your favorite teddy bear. And lunch is provided by Giant. Uh, that is Wednesday, May 29th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And again, it's at the Aquatic Center. Sponsors and participating businesses include Giant, Wawa, Arnold's, Natural Balance Gymnastics, and Smile Exchange. Free registration is required. It's $5 per child. And again, HatfieldRec.com to register. We have a bus trip coming up, so we're partnering again with Upper Gwinnett Township to bring you a day on your own in New York City. This is Saturday, June 1st. Bus departs 8 a.m. from Upper Gwinnett Township. Seats are limited, so register now at HatfieldRec.com. We also have golf lessons coming up. Registration for summer golf is now open. Hatfield partners with Lansdale Barrow to provide golf lessons for youth and adults at our own Twin Woods Golf Course here. The lessons include adult beginner ages 15 and up Thursdays from June 6th through the 27th of June from 7 p.m. to 8. It's $105. Adult experienced, again, ages 15 and up is Thursdays uh, starting June 6th through the 27th from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. And that is also 105. And then there's also a juniors ages 14. That's Wednesdays um, starting June 5th through the 26th at 6 to 7 p.m. And that's $80. And you can register for that at HatfieldRec.com. Last but not least, we have specialty camps. We're going to have a girls-only basketball camp. That will be August 5th through August 9th, ages 9 to 14. We have a nature camp, Monday, August 19th through Friday, August 23rd, 8 to 12 is the age. Camp Girl Power, Monday, August 19th through Friday, August 23rd, ages 9 to 12. And Crayola Passport Camp, that's August 26th through the 30th, ages 6 to 12. So for more pricing and information on and to register for the camps, you can visit HatfieldRec.com. Right. Well, we're getting into the busy season yes, for a lot are. of those, so that's good that we have a large update. <clears throat> okay, public safety. Um, we have building and fire code update. Aaron, I think that you have this. I don't know if you have a, <clears throat> a screenshot or a uh, well, PowerPoint. I, I, uh, Mr. President, I feel somewhat vindicated because if Justin can't fix it, then it wasn't my fault. Uh, so we have no slides here tonight. So we're. Yeah, that's right. You broke it good. That's a good point. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to pretend that uh, it makes me feel better. <laughs> this item did not have any slides uh, e either way. Uh, this is simply a housekeeping item. Last fall, the state updated the building code. We have a statewide uniform construction code, which all 2,500 municipalities um, uh, participate in through state legislation. So the, the, there are several parts in the township code that refers to the old state wide code. So we just want to update some of the language so we're current uh, moving forward. So it's a housekeeping item, no substantive changes um, as far as the code on the township side, obviously the state updated and has significant or well, some significant changes in that code. But two weeks, uh, but since this will be an ordinance. So two weeks, we'll um, have a motion to advertise as we 
work on the language. We'll let the commissioners review before advertise and then approve in, uh, in, in June. But updating our code to reflect the changes statewide. All right. Uh, Finance Committee, Commissioner Andrews. There's nothing to report. Uh, township staff reports. Uh, Aaron, I think you have the next two items. Sir, thank you. <clears throat> First item, as we are continue to move through the, the process of, of realigning Cowpath and Orvilla, we had a uh, productive meeting last week at PennDOT with Township Solicitor's Office and the Traffic Engineer's Office. We're getting very close to finally receiving a permit from PennDOT uh, so that, that we could bid the project. And I'm hoping that we come here next month in June and talk about bidding the project and then subsequently seeing some work being completed out there. Um, what, what, we, what we're going to do in two weeks, uh, we'll be in front of the board, is transferring the deeds of what is currently owned by the township to PennDOT, where the new, newer villa will be. Um, there was a lot of discussion on PennDOT's end as far as how they would like to see that happen, but we finally reached a conclusion with the solicitor and PennDOT that made them comfortable, so there will be a transfer um, of the deed, I think by resolution, we're working on that, but in two weeks we'll have that finalized and it'll be in front of the board, which essentially means at the end of construction, this is going to be a state road, as we all know. You know, the commissioners made a lot of efforts to correct a state problem as far as a dangerous intersection. Um, so really simple. Uh, township property now gets turned over to PennDOT, where the road will be. Second item. Could have used the graphics, um, but I'm going to explain the best I can. Everyone knows where Schweiker Park is. Everyone knows where the old American Olean Tile plant is in part of Lansdale, part of Hatfield Township. There are three parcels that are currently zoned light industrial um, just adjacent to the Logan Drive portion of Hatfield Township. As we try to do often through committee discussions, and Commissioner Andrus brought this to our attention, we try to update our zoning map um, as a housekeeping effort over the years. And that portion, those three parcels specifically, were zoned that way in the 40s because of the, the existing tile facility. Uh, with that no longer being operating, we, do, we don't know what the future development holds. We just thought it made sense to consider rezoning those three parcels to residential because the, the, the fabric of that community and that whole area of the, the township is zoned RA1, single family, residential, 20,000 square foot minimum lots. And uh, it seemed to make sense and in the best interest of the township residents and Commissioner Andrews brought it to our attention. We talked about it, it made sense. And tonight we're proposing if the, if the board would, would be willing to at least at this point uh, make a motion um, to move forward with advertising and ordinance. And we, we've been through the rezone process many times now over the last several years, but this is a little different because it's driven by the, the township and driven by you know, protecting the residents. Um, so there would be a public hearing just as there has been in, in, in previous um, situations. But if the board would consider tonight advertising, scheduling a public hearing, we have certain uh, time frames that we need to uh, abide by as, as far as reviews from the county and from the local planning commission so we we could be in a position to have a public hearing um in mid-june in the june workshop if the if the board would be willing to move forward with that with the understanding that very different than the last zoning change here you know uh, uh public hearings that we have had this one is a one that the residents will be uh very i would imagine uh, unanimously would support because it would then provide some protection as far as uh, buffering any future development. So if we could, Mr. President, have a, um, a motion to advertise ordinance to consider rezoning the three parcels in question. You'll probably word it much better than that. I was just going to see if there was a motion that reflected what you just articulated, so, but I'll do the best I can. I'm on board. <clears throat> All right, so the motion is, is uh, that the motion by Commissioner Andrus is to advertise for a rezone hearing related to three parcels uh, in the area described. Um, and so there's a motion and there's a second by Commissioner Rogers. All right, any discussion, questions, comments? It, it just to clear, that, that motion's perfect. To clarify, we will have in the ad, obviously, we will identify all three parcels by, you know, by name. The property will be posted. 
every resident within 500 feet will be notified. The property owner will be notified. Lansdale Borough will be notified. We will follow the, the typical procedures, even if we, you know, we don't have the graphics in front of us today. We will have further discussion in June before the action is taken. Okay. With that, I will uh, call the question. All in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, that motion is approved. All right. Uh, anything else under uh, manager's report? That is all, Mr. President. Okay, solicitor's report. Uh, just one thing, Chief, did you get the date for the golf lessons? I want to make sure you put that on your calendar. So. It's, at th it's at this moment I realize why we put two of you at extreme opposites of the day. Other than that, nothing to report. To the meeting. Yes. I think Chief may have to have a consultation with you, Mr. Solicitor, afterwards. Now an executive session. At the hospital. Uh, I don't know if we can call that an executive session. Feed the ER. Take care. <laughs> All right. Any uh, citizens' comments? Any other questions or comments? Yes, sir. Please, if you go to the uh, podium. <coughs> Paul Mort, 282 Fortuna Drive. Just related to the Aspen Mills uh, subdivision. No problem with the planning module going forward for wastewater. I kind of expected that that would happen in the background. But just would like a pseudo clarification i think i saw in the planning commission minutes that there was it was referred to as 1622 walnut whereas in these agendas it's referred to as aspen mills so the one house that's already built does that need approval of this wastewater module to be sold because it's for sale now or is that entirely separate well is the, the module that you're voting on just for the additional homes that would be built? The module is for the eight new homes. There was a sewer connection on the parcel for the home that was torn down several years ago, and that sewer connection would still supply the one home that's, that's been built. So the module is, is to extend the main and serve the other eight lots. However, the, one, the lot that's already been built can't be sold. It, it is listed for sale, but it, it can't be sold until the subdivision is recorded. Right now, right now, that lot does not does not exist until the recording's done. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Rogers, second by Commissioner Thomas. All in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 Opposed. Hearing none, we are adjourned. Thanks for coming out.